Hello everyone. So today is going to be another rant video. I sort I just finished up reading the Criminal Justice Pack, pack of four books that I wanted to read, and I read one of them last year. Definitely wanted to finish the other three this year. While doing this, I was asked a very pertinent question by Miss Bailey, and that question was, "Yo, why am I reading these? It seems that they're so very different. There's almost no point. They're so wide. They're so vast. Actually." These four very scholarly publications are quite useful and go one hand in hand with the others if you're willing to do the intellectual work. So first up, I already did a video on Rise of the Warrior Cop, and I might link that in the description. Then again, I, I might not, you know, if you want it, it's out there. That talked about funding the personalities of Daryl Gates, Richard Nixon, and bad court decisions that the book brought to light. However, though, the book also got into... The fact that many cops, either through training that is directly provided or paid for by their department, or of their own volition, are getting training from a guy named Dave Grossman. Now, if you were in the United States military, you, may, you know Dave Grossman from his work on a book called On Killing, where he breaks down ways that essentially beat hesitation and sort of break the shell of that innate ability people have that stops them from doing violence. Now, his, uh, his teaching methodology, probably good for certain circumstances, but not police. I want my police departments hesitant to kill, believe it or not. So, now, what actually I thought was interesting is on killing is that, of course, it's violence culture because Grossman himself was a career military person, and he actually is a doctor of either psychology or psychiatry. I want to say psychology, but, you know, I forget. But either way, what I noticed in On Killing was actually pretty interesting. He has some quotes here that frankly make him seem, you know, like an egalitarian. And several things he says about how African Americans are treated in society. Here's three quotes in general. Now, first quote is a response to when people say just a one-size-fits-all solution for reducing violence in youth. And he, essentially his argument is there is no, uh, there is nothing race-neutral because race-neutral itself is going to help the advantage more than the disadvantage. It is so blatantly, profoundly racist in its effects, if not its intent, because the black community in America is the culture or nation that has borne the brunt of electronic media's violence enabling. Many medical authorities believe that it is the constant hostility and lack of acceptance that they must face and the resulting stress that are responsible for the dramatic rate of high blood pressure in African Americans. This is actually very interesting given that he's credited in Rise of the Warrior Cop for essentially creating a rougher, much more violent form of policing that, that some authors would argue inevitably will affect the African American community more. Now what's interesting is his take on mass incarceration. Two major factors serve as societal tourniquets that suppress the bleeding that would occur if the number of murders increased at the same rates as aggravated assaults. First is the steady increase in the presumably violent percentage of our population that we imprison. The prison population in America has gone up from less than 100 per 100,000 in 1970 to almost 500 per 100,000 40 years later. A five-fold increase in the proportion of our citizens incarcerated. Over 2 million Americans in jail. Now, interestingly enough, although obviously we can look at from prison population that this disproportionately affects the African American community, he doesn't see mass incarceration through any type of racial lens whatsoever. And uh, in fact, he thinks that it's what's prevented more violent crime. Simply put, housing potentially violent offenders in prison is what he credits for reducing murders. You know, obviously, I'm not sure if that's the case. It is very interesting, though, because the next work I studied, and pay, Miss Bailey, pay close attention because this is where they're going to connect. The next work I studied is The New Jim Crow, Mass Incarceration in the Age of Colorblindness. Now, what's funny is out of the three books thus far I've mentioned, On Killing by Grossman and The New Jim Crow by Alexander, are the most in common to where you could actually even take quotes from one and transfer it to the other. The thing is, of course, is the new Jim Crow picks up on the correction side of what 
Rise of the Warrior Cop alerted us to. Now, fascinatingly, I have a quote here, and of course it's from the previous author, but this quote, it could be in either book, really. So that shows you how common these are. How much longer can America afford to imprison larger and larger percentages of its population? This is a very sagely wise question, wise question to ask. The last book I want to talk about is Privatizing Justice. Oddly enough, out of the three, this is the one that seems to have the least to do with the others. However, it does fit in here in a way. All the problems we've mentioned of mass incarceration, racial inequality, and whatever, are only going to be made worse by privatization. First of all, here's really the, the consequences. They cut cost, which, frankly, I don't, you know, you can't provide the same amount of services to a larger group of people while you're cutting costs. It seems an impossibility, and they're going to make up for that somewhere. It's impersonal. You know, at least the people who used to work in prisons were state employees or county employees, people who presumably had stake in the had stake in their communities. Unprofessional. You look at what some of these corrections officers in these privatized facilities are making, and it is pathetic. It, you know, you can make as much at a fast food restaurant in some cases. So, I, how they're going to get professionals who are really dedicated, careerist, I don't really know. And I would argue it's dangerous. Look, they have got to be saving that money somewhere. They're either going to be saving it on the structures they make, or they're going to be saving it on hiring fewer corrections personnel. But the last one I really want to get to is incentivizing repeat customers. What really is the goal for reform in these cases? You know, I have here... A picture of RoboCop, the original, not the disgrace that was the remake. And it's funny to me how close we've come to being OCP. Yet, no, okay, we do not have cyborgs patrolling the streets of Detroit. But look at all the, ver the ways drone technology has been integrated. Look at all the technology vendor companies that process data for police departments and such. And, of course, I have here to the very far right this group of businesses here, you know, Core Civic, Geo, I'm sorry, Geo Group, MTC, I forgot to add one, and that's G4S, which is mentioned heavily in the book. These are multi-million dollar corporations that are essentially turning inmates into walking dollar signs.